Hello, everybody. You are listening to, watching the Blue Monday podcast now in our fifth season, bringing you all the news and wonderful happenings with regards to the great Ipswich Town Football Club. And I'm here with the great David Diamond um, for a hastily convened podcast. Um, Dave, I thought it was important that, um, especially someone with your kind of knowledge on this, that we as a podcast do something to just pay tribute to um, the passing very recently of Philip Hope Cobbold. Yeah, no, thanks. It's good. You know, you mentioned it and I thought, yeah, we should we should do it and perhaps, you know, just touch a little bit on, which I don't think we'd ever really covered before, the the Cobbold dynasty and what it really means to the, um, you know, what it means to the club, the whole Absolutely. family. So, um, Philip Hope Cobbold died um, this past week. Um, so, Dave will be um, paying tribute in just a sec. But, Dave, because I'm sure people will be interested in your views, um, would you like to talk, A, about uh, Luke Wolfenden signing a contract extension, a rather large one as well, and or the um, arrivals of the new Ipswich Sound Kits, which was excellently covered by Craig, Joe and Richard on the show. You yeah, cover either of those? Yeah. Yeah. So would I what? Sorry. Do you want to cover either of those quickly? I will. Sorry. I said, would I, would I buy either of those? <laughs> um, um, yeah. I, I mean, I think that, um, that, I mean, let's go, I mean, Luke Wolf and then, yeah, good for the club. I mean, I think, I mean, it is a bumper. It's like four years, isn't it? Four year contract. With the option, so, yeah. so look, being totally cynical, um, the club are protecting an asset there, aren't they? The club are protecting an asset, which is good to see because they, they often haven't, haven't done that um him and or you know the other perhaps let's say jewel in the crown at the moment being flynn downs obviously um whether we will see both or either of them in a shirt next season whenever that is um i'm not completely sure but look from my point of view call it cynical but i think it's good the club have got you know obviously a very promising young player now not obviously not the finished article by any means but at least they're protecting the asset and yeah let's see if if they sell then hopefully we've given that length of contract at least we should get some sort of realistic fee for him ben whatever that might be although Realistic fees for centre half. I did see. Let's put on a slightly different ben perspective. Ben Godfrey, 50 you probably million. know where I'm going with this. <laughs> fifty million pounds for Ben Godfrey being touted around. So look, you know, um, any anything, anything could happen. No, in town, we'll sell him for half a million. But um, yeah, it's um, no good to see. Um, as far as the kit, interesting. Yeah, um, I quite like the away kit. It's quite sort of different. Whether I buy it and wear it myself at my age, I probably wouldn't. But um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Kind of, kind of like it, and it's well. Was it? I haven't read that much about it. It's sort of like, was it biodegradable or something? Isn't it? What is it? Was it? Was it something? I think. I, I think it's very woke, isn't it? <laughs> woke, <laughs> woke. Um, so yeah, my so this shows my so my youngest son, son who's twenty one, twenty two, very rarely buys. But twenty two, very I should know his age. Very rarely buys kits. I think he still he still wears the blue two thousand fourteen fifteen shirt, which is his favourite ever shirt. So that's the only season <laughs> partial success he's ever seen and probably ever likely to see. But anyway, he hangs on to that. But even he said he he likes that and might well um you know might well consider buying that one. Home shirt I like, yeah, quite traditional. Yeah, I like that. Uh a throwback um and a celebration of the um of the of the great team that uh you and Statman so well chronicled wow. um, uh, that you can find, long, find in the archives. Um, just where, where do you stand quickly, Dave, on where is the line in um, celebrating your history but not dwelling in it where, where, uh, in regards to this shirt? Where is I mean, I don't know. So, look, I, for me, I'd leave, you know, they've got the three stars. I've had the three stars under the badge. Good to see the good to see the badges, the tr- the more traditional yes, badge. The yellow one. Yeah. I'm all I'm all I'm all up for that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd basically for me, I'd leave it. They've got the three stars there, which is obviously the championship, the FA Cup, the UEFA Cup. The three stars that actually mean something. So, I'm I'm quite I'm quite comfortable with that. I'd simply leave it at that. 
And in this bizarre season, Dave, I'd just like to tell you that in the League One playoff final, we're recording on Monday evening. It's 8.47 and Oxford have just equalised. Uh-huh. Um, look at what you could have won. Um, look, at, look at what you could have won. I mean, I, I haven't said, I saw, a, I saw a little bit of it earlier. I think Wickham's goal was an own goal. But more importantly, I think you, you asked the question, what was, um, what was Gareth Ainsworth, what was his attire <laughs> this evening? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think my lads, my lads, lovely. My lads was hoping he'd come out in some sort of white Elvis Presley jumpsuit or something <laughs> like that, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he's. I mean, what he's, 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 he's kit, he's get up for the um for the semi final. Sort of biker jacket, wasn't it? Yeah, is he wearing a suit? Has he got a suit on tonight? The, Tell me, the he's blue not. jeans and that. I, I don't know. I've to be honest. I, I haven't watched. I haven't watched any. Well, of I mean, but... mate, if 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 that if if he gets that, what? Well, I don't just. Lost for words. If he gets them up, unbelievable, incredible. What, what a job! That? I don't know what the hell odds were they at the start of the season, but long, oh, um, lengthy. There you go, Dave. Just quickly, um, does the um, uh, talking cause and effect here? Does the Wolfenden contract news make it more likely now that we won't see Flynn Downs again? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so. Leave that I, look, right I, as I said before, I'd be pleasantly surprised if we see if we see both of them i think uh yeah uh the downs was downs 21 is he now 21 22 21 um yeah had, had such a good season he yeah, he could play he, he could certainly be comfortable at championship level after this after the season he had last season i'd have thought he could make that step up yeah good player okay um hope. so yeah. let's um let's talk about yeah. philip hope cobbled then um dave because i think you wanted to talk about him and the the, the family particularly well, i think so i think it's a we should what do, this really. passing now means for you know that vast swathe of history for the club he was the last link he was the last link to the club um so he passed away um passed away last week at not mega old 70 excuse me 76 i think um and it, it it's the last real link of the cobalt family it goes back to the formation of the club in 1878 for goodness sake um he's um he was a nephew of john and patrick cobalt the two which we will touch on a bit in a minute the two legendary um legendary chairman of the club and the son of captain murray cobalt i'm sorry the uh, sorry it's son um grandson sorry of captain murray cobbold or ivan cobbold as it were who um who led the club into was chairman of the club um and led the club into the into the football league in 1930 well, sorry professional made the club professional in 1936 um and so where does this dynasty continue then dave well what will continue now yeah uh, well no and it did oh from, from then the on yeah, yeah. From then on yeah well um so um Ivan Cobbold was um, was was like I said was chairman of the club um, when they first you know moved from amateur to professional. Tragically killed, he was in the um, um, in the uh, in the army and killed by a, a German V2 rocket, I think, in the Guards Chapel in London in 1944, I believe. Um, by this time, so John Cobbold, his son, I believe, was the youngest ever. Direct, he was director of, a, of Ipswich Town at the age of 21, for goodness sake. <laughs> uh, it's just, just incredible. So obviously, football, um, football started again after the after the war, regionally, um, regionally after the war, um, and um, yeah, I mean that was quite interesting. The original, how how that they originally moved into the professional from amateur to professional. He was he's, he was great friends with um, one of the with Samuel Hill Wood. That was the uh, Again, a similar dynasty to it to the Cobbles at Ipswich. They were the great Arsenal dynasty, who persuaded him that he, perhaps he should um, he should own a football club or or become chairman of the football club elite and you know and get them into the professional professional game, which he you know which he which he did. And I think even back then, right through to the cup final and beyond, the, you know the links with the Cobbles and the Hillwoods at Arsenal was always always very close. How does that parlay into the Robson era and all that business, then, Dave? Well, it does, doesn't it? I mean, so uh, John Cobbold becomes chairman in um, 1950, 1957. Um, just a season or so after the appointment of of, Alf Ram- of obviously of Sir Alf Ramsey, which and then we all know we all know what happened. Then Ipswich, Ipswich then win Division One. 1960 61 win division one and obviously win the um you know win the championship at the first attempt in 61 
61 62 um not a higher a fire of managers as as we'll see in a moment but um obviously then ramsey gets off at the england job he, he as robson years later um he really wants ramsey to stay but realizes you can't really stand in his way and the points that we touched on earlier jackie jackie milburn who un- <laughs> unfortunately the club a very a- under a pretty aging team had won the league in 1961-62 um very much downhill after that season culminating in 1963-64 where they concede like 120 goals and 10 at Fulham and 9 at Stoke and 6 at Liverpool I mean it's just just ridiculous um um and so Milburn Milburn has to go and I read it in the brilliant the brilliant books there's two two books there's a book called Mr John um written by Mel Henderson which was basically bank, um, based on John Cobble's transcripts that he basically left in the weeks months that he knew he would you know, he was going to die of cancer. Um, and the Football Gentry, I think, by Brian Scovel, which, again, is an absolutely brilliant book about the whole Cobbold family dynasty history. Absolutely, absolutely superb. So, um, and it says in this book, when Milburn go, he actually cried. It absolutely broke his heart. Then, and again, another inspired appointment brought in Bill McGarry that basically lifted the club up, lifted the club up, um, screaming and kicking, really. I think the club was in a really low ebb then. Got us promoted back into the Football League in 67, 68. Um, and then 68, 69, thought he'd gone as far as he could with Ipswich, joined Wolves, and then the absolutely inspired appointment of, of Robson. Well, I say the inspired appointment of Robson, who wasn't his first choice. Um, I think the job was offered to Billy Bingham and Franco Frowell, I believe, prior to Bobby Robson even coming on the scene and saw something in Bobby Robson. May have even been almost a last resort. And... Um, offered him the job and you know this is you know between John Cobbled and the Cobbles as a whole you know Robson says it was just like working for no one no one else you know that that you know that whole I call it the Corinthians you know that whole Corinthian spirit and you know the famous I think a journalist once asked him you know so you know John you know what happens you know um, you know, what happens when you win a game? So, you know, we open a bottle of champagne. Well, OK, what happens when you lose? Well, we open two bottles. That was very, <laughs> much, that was very much their philosophy, their philosophy with the club. And yeah, really, you know, really very, again, I can, um, I can sort of, yeah, pretty much remember this. He, I think he relinquished, I think he was ill for a long time. Died again, died at a young age, 56. Um, liked to drink, like, liked to drink, particularly. Um, he, um, and basically, Due to ill health. I'll drink to that, Dave. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, because of ill health, gave over the chairmanship to his brother Patrick in 19, 1976. And he died in um, he died in 1983. Patrick Cobbold took over in 76 and was chairman for the, you know, the great, so the, the great, the great part of the Robson era being the FA Cup final and the, um, you know, and, and the UEFA Cup final. And did, yeah, he keep just... up, did he keep up the traditions in the boardroom then, Dave? I think he did. His um, stories are found in the boardroom, and he's he's their mother, um, Lady Blanche Cobbold, who's the who was a real you know matriarch and and um, uh, uh, president of the club, president of the club for thirty seasons, I believe. And again, famous famously aged about eighty. Cup final day against Arsenal in the in the Royal Box was asked if she wanted to meet Margaret Thatcher, and famously said, "I'd." Oh no, not really. I'd prefer a large gin and tonic. I mean, that was very much. That's just how he, you know how it all goes. And then the stories about the, the stories about both of them just absolutely abound. It's absolutely tremendous. There was one story I think where he had to um, Ipswich were um, the youth league at the time was the South East Counties League, and you know the town used to play um, a bit like the football combination, the reserves back in the old days. So you know you played the the cream of clubs in the south. So Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea, West Ham. Tottenham, you know, all these, all these, you know, you know, really well established clubs, you know, big, big clubs with, um, you know, attracting the, you know, the cream of the youngsters and, you know, Ipswich used to go up against, you know, under Robson, Ipswich used to go up against these clubs and invariably win. And he was chairman apparently of the South East Counties League and they had the, the, the you know, the presentation dinner at the, I don't know, the Grosvenor Hotel in London. And um, Robson says in one of his, I think I've read it in two of his books actually, that John Cobble gets up to do his speech and is so pissed he just falls under the table and they have to carry him physically, carry him out. And he said it just got the biggest round of applause and cheers ever <laughs> to any after dinner, any after dinner speech. And that was very much the, that was very much their, you know, very much their way. And there's stories about, you know, journalists used to love coming to Ipswich from London. As one guy said, 
I never used to really, when I knew I was coming to Ipswich, I always told my wife, look, um, don't don't meet me at the station. I'll be on the last train and I'll just get a cab home if I make it home. And it was very much, you know, it's very much like that. And yeah, yeah, um, both really died young. And Patrick Cobble went, again, reasonably, reasonably young. I think about early, early 90s, early 90s, I think. Um, and then, of course, that sort of, Dynasty was passed to obviously to David to David Sheepshanks then, um, and I know um, uh, Philip Hope Cobbold remained remained as um, remained on the board until ninety seven when obviously the Marcus I'm um, sorry two thousand and seven when obviously the Marcus Evans deal was the Marcus Evans deal was done, and yeah it's still re- retain the link because re- he was retained as a patron of the club up until his death last week. Yeah, and um, we've seen tweets from um, Matt Holland and Jim McGilton who've been on the show that he was he was definitely still around, Dave. And um, uh, my well, it's kind of personal, but my mother and father had been to uh, my mother's suffering with dementia and um, had been to they have a do there um, at the club in the I don't know even what it's called now the old Galleria restaurant the yeah. one that the one that Joe yeah. sits in well, I'm and. Sweet. Um, well, I'm he would hold court and obviously really? my 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 father being a great football fan you know would have long conversations um with him and with him at these dudes for the sort of dementia society or something is um that... I, you know I, I phoned my dad today to ask and obviously he's kind of you know it's a yeah. it's a it's a emotional subject for us yeah. but um yeah he, he he said that he'd um he he'd spoken with him at a, at a couple of these um occasions so yeah, um, and what what is the what what is just to summarise, Dave, the the, the Cobbold's um, legacy really really? Do you know what up? I think it's be, it's best summed up, and it's a really well known story. Really, it's a really well known story in the fact that Robson, uh, Bobby Robson, obviously, as I said, he was appointed um, almost. And honestly, Bernie, you, you read about it, it was almost like default because there was no they really had no one else to turn to. I mean, it was just fate really struggled. I mean, okay, Ipswich trying to establish, you know, trying to establish themselves in, in Division 1, in the top division at the time, after promotion a couple of seasons before. You know, struggled, I think, just avoided rele- relegation, certainly in two of the seasons Robson was in charge. And the famous game and the turning point, as it's well documented, was a League Cup game in September 1971. Um, Man United, just on the cusp of, you know, George Best just about to go off the rails, if he hadn't already, but still the, the Holy Trinity, Best, Lord Charlton, two or three years up after they won the European Cup. Absolutely got destroyed on the night by George Best. He was just on it, absolutely imperious, lost 3-1. And then we hadn't had a very good start to the season. This was a sort of League Cup League Cup tie. Fans calling for his head, you know, calling for sacking, sacking of Bobby Robson. Robson had already been sacked um, by Fulham. Famously went home and said to his wife, look, um, they've, you know, I've been called summoned to a board summoned to a board meeting tomorrow morning, pack your bags. I fear the worst. I think I'm going to be sacked. And this was brilliant. Turns up the board meeting, sits down in his chair, very nervous. And John Cobble gets up. And the first thing he said was, I'd just like to record our, um, our apologies at the fans behavior towards you last night. You are our manager. Um, and, um, and promptly gave him um, authorized, I don't know, 70, 60, 70,000 pounds to go and buy Alan Hunter from Blackburn Rovers. And that was pretty much the turning point of the whole of the whole era, really. And the rest is the rest, the rest, is, the rest is history. And, and, is and the legacy, Ben, probably without the, you know, without the Cobble family. And I know, um, I read again, read somewhere else. You know, Ivan Cobble, you know, the the chairman during the war years, basically kept the club afloat. You know, the club obviously no football kept the club afloat with a you know donation of you know a sizable sum at the sum at the time, which I think. Equating today would probably be I don't know half a million pounds, maybe more than that. I'm I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but really without the Cobbold family, the club sounds a bit awful where the club is at the moment. But the club wouldn't be the club that it is and have the history that it that it that it that it has had. It just wouldn't have that. It just wouldn't wouldn't be totally different. And to be also so well, I think Ben so well liked throughout the football, you know, the football world by okay back in a certain that the certain era, but yeah, that still, I think that still carries on. You know, that still carries on to this. That still carries on to this day. So Philip Hope Cobbold, who died um, this past week at the age of seventy-six, the last, mm. the last link to the Cobbold family, and um, 
really, as Dave says, um, Ipswich Town as it was then. Uh, we all hope that there can be a new uh, dynasty or that the current dynasty, um, you know, carries some of the stories going forward there. But um, certainly a very important um, person from the most important family in um, Ipswich Town history, Dave. No, oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And yeah, we we you know their 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 money came from obviously the the Tolly Mash, the Tolly the you know the Tolly Cobble Brewery, which I didn't really appreciate. Again, you do doing a little bit of research about this. They show they sold out back in the seventies. I mean, I knew they'd sold it, sold it out to a, a shipping line, obviously pension fund, I should imagine. Um, sold it out to Element Shipping Line back in the you know back in the seventies. I didn't didn't realize that. And it's that's, that's kind of sad because you know you had the Tolly Cobble Brewery, at, you know, at Cliff Key and the Brewery Tap, and you know you you. Oh, funny enough, I cycled past there not so long back, and it's yeah, all a bit dilapidated now, and you know, bit of a sorry, you know, bit of a bit of a sorry sight now. But um, yeah, we'll always be, you know, we'll always be, yeah, part of the bedrock of bedrock of the football club. And just before we go, I touched on if anyone gets the opportunity, this is an absolute Mr. John by Mel Henderson, which I said up a was, bit higher, Dave. Sorry, yeah, was I said okay. which was a book. Um, just before and saying the months year months before he died he 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 um he left his memoirs on um tape on you know cassette tape which um i think he he passed on to mel henderson look when he goes uh, yeah, when i go please you know do something with this and a really good hey you know how he is held in great affection a really good um forward in that book by um by alan hunter who you know him and him and certainly him and him and mr john as he calls him were um were you know absolute soulmates and the other one is absolute superb book which is the the, the football gentry about the cobbled about patrick john and patrick cobbled by um you know brian scovel the um the football journalist absolutely yeah just absolutely superb wonderful um, stuff so yeah. um and that is our um tribute to philip hope cobbled um the last of the cobbled dynasty um who died this past week um Dave, thank you for that. Um, oh, hopefully, um, hopefully, some listeners will um, will have learnt something or relate, there, or, we'll certainly relate to it. Or, hopefully, yeah, and we'll as, relate to it. As um, you said, hopefully, some similar times ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, EFL meetings are abound. We're assuming that we'll get a, a yeah, date for for a restart any any i mean you're all over it any what's the latest any anything the latest is they've delayed the latest meeting for another week so we're gonna get into all of that nonsense Uh, yeah obviously david depends just so much on um can they start with the threat of you know fans not being there or another lockdown and having to stop and you know uh we've seen uh, okay wigan's administration doesn't really seem to be covid linked it just seems to be some absolutely mental behavior by <laughs> by the owners allegedly um but i don't think they've got any money to sue us anyway so i mean and uh, also should we should we just give a quick mention to um to our neighbors up the road for their um quite um spectacular fall out of um fall out of the top division this year it's a difficult one isn't it dave so norwich uh, the record fifth relegation um in the but premier it's... league era um i don't want to say ten... too much in no, case it's... they score 92 points and win the championship again next they probably season and then it's just, it's, establish it's themselves it's the as a premier league what club staggered for the next me years. what staggered me and i didn't fully appreciate it did they say and I'm, you you would know this but on the, the the game against west ham nine of the players that started that game played the last game of last season in the championship Oh, they went entirely back to their. It's to their not going to cut it. Team. So I mean, they just. I mean, look. If you're a fan, I, I just don't know how you feel about that. If you're a fan, I don't know. I mean, you know, they're going to have a great. They're, they're going to have a good season next year because whatever they're going to sell a Cantwell or a Godfrey, probably not for fifty million. Knowing Norwich, it'll be fifty-five. But you know, what I mean, they're going to sell one of those. They're going to be strong and bounce back, aren't they? It's the championship, Dave. Well, yeah, you know, price is crazy, isn't it? You don't know. You take the wrong player out, you get the wrong injury, good point, good point. bad little run. Um, leads, so, leads, yeah. leads up this year. Leads are up, yeah. yeah. Um, could have it done by could have it done by Thursday. Then, then who? Then who? Um, well, either West Brom or Brentford. So oh, to be back in the championship, hey, yeah, hey, Dave. Um, yeah. We must say Great. thank you really quickly. You can now support the podcast via the Acast supporter 
facility and there was another couple of donations on there so we um thank those people there um if you just go on your acast yeah. app hit support um you're under no obligation to um give us any of your money um if you do we will be very very grateful none of us are trying to make any kind of a living out of this it's a it's a fun um it's a fun podcast that we do but we can buy equipment headsets um we can fund the season ticket that we have between us uh for the pod with it as well and um if you have listened or watched over the past five years and you feel that you might want to donate something that's where the money will go or maybe um help us to hire a room or sound guy for another live show uh, next year so um if you just go into the Acast app and all the links are there on our Twitter as well, um, we'll be really, really grateful if you um, if you can use that supporter feature on Acast. So, Dave, no idea what the plan is. We don't know when the football will be back. Normally, we have a lovely we have a lovely three month break. Dude, but we try to keep try to keep things ticking over. Um, so uh, we may be back on before the season um, starts or we may be back for the season previews, but um, yes, I'm, I'm sure people will, will be, um, will be glad to have heard your voice and uh, the tribute to Philip Hope Cobble there, Dave. Yeah. Thanks mate. No, enjoyed that. Thanks for, um, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I thought, I thought it had to be, it was something that had to be marked. I thought. No problem. Um, as ever, please follow us uh, at Blue Monday ITFC on Twitter. I'm sure you already have. Um, subscribe, obviously, via Acast. And um, help us out as well on YouTube as well. Subscribe there. Um, we're going to try and um, up the ante a little bit um, with the um, show next season. So uh, YouTube will be, will, be the, will be the place there. And we, we might be able to create some more interactivity um certainly over there and and on twitter in there in the coming months um dave um, have you got anything amusing or witty to say well, i'm not sure i'm not i'm not, not really sure i have really um yeah I, 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 i'm just talking about you know the football now and I, I must admit you know listening to you know watching the um you know watching the football behind closed doors particularly the premier football very sterile i'm finding it I'm finding it hard. I'm really finding it hard to watch. I've enjoyed watching the chat. I've enjoyed watching the championship a lot more as you would a lot more, yeah, a lot more absolutely. cut and thrust. And, but, uh, no, um, I think, yeah, so sort of be careful, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Be careful what you grab. <laughs> <laughs>